Proceeding forward, I propose that the Commission issue a notice of investigation on the health and safety issue and that we ask the Commission staff to name Central Maine Power as the mandatory party with the original complainants and to open the proceeding to additional requests to intervene. My name is Bruce McLaughlin. I'm here at the Public Utility Commission in Augusta, Maine. I am the attorney representing the complainants in the smart meter case that was just decided by the Maine Law Court. The court uh, determined that the PUC has failed to adequately address health and safety issues in its uh, consideration of smart meter technology and has now ordered the Commission to do an investigation of smart meters with respect to the health and safety concerns that people have about smart meters. The Commission met this morning briefly just to inform the public that they will in fact go ahead and hold an investigation. So my name is Ed, Ed Friedman and I'm the lead plaintiff in a, in a 10 person complaint brought before the Maine Public Utilities Commission. We actually had 19 people bring the complaint. 10 is the minimum required for that. Um, we brought a complaint because we were unhappy with multiple aspects of uh, a very, very rapid deployment of so-called smart meters. While today's, while today's deliberations were extremely short, they were very important and in fact probably set a precedent in that this is probably the first time a Public Utilities Commission has agreed to move forward with health and safety uh, investigations on smart meters. I'm here with my wife. We came here as a result of the Superior Court unanimous ruling on the question of health issues with smart meters, which we have been opposed to from the get-go. And uh, we've read a lot of the science behind uh, these smart meters and certainly the rest of the world and the public in the state of Maine needs to be aware of what is going on with central Maine power. We came here this morning to find out what the process is, where we go from here, and what do we do from here. And we will be here for all of these meetings if we can be. So please read. I'm a retired law librarian and I did some research. I keep on doing research about EMF and connection with smart meters and also cell phones. And it's, I think the public, if they would learn more about it, would be as concerned as I am. And I wanna particularly talk about infants and children and the fact that when you have a smart meter on your home, your child cannot get away from the EMF. When you have a smart meter, only usually the adult is using it and you're not using it 24 hours a day. But the important thing to know is that this is very dangerous to infants and young children all the way up through adolescence. People should be concerned about putting a smart meter on their house. There are signals coming from adjacent houses, from apartments in the same apartment building, and from the cell towers, of course. So I ask other people to get informed about this and join us in trying to find a way to get the PUC to pay attention to the health issues. We should be very, very grateful and proud that we have a Maine Supreme Court which decided to support us in our effort to find out about these issues. And we want to do a very good job and force the CMP and the PUC to do a good job with this. You can help by writing or calling. But yes, I would try Googling EMF and safety or EMF and health. Put the EMF in quotes. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, myself and some of uh, my neighbors uh, have come here this morning um, uh, to the PUC so that we could uh, make our presence known and uh, allow them to see that uh, this um, uh, in investigation that the court has uh, upheld needs to go forward. Uh, that there will be people uh, watching and very interested in this. We have a room full of people. We had to get extra chairs. Uh, this is becoming an issue that more and more people are becoming educated about. And that's what I would just like to say to uh, all of us. Please get online, uh, read articles, uh, see if, uh, if you can become more informed about this. Because the more informed we become, I think the more we will be uh, aware that um, uh, playing with something that we do not know about and getting it out there before there's proper investigation done on it could be uh, disastrous. Uh, 
I remember many years ago when uh, uh, crop uh, spraying with DDT was something that uh, was done all the time because it was going to kill all the bugs. Well, we found out that DDT uh, also uh, did more than kill the bugs. And before uh, we, we uh, come into a time when, um, when people are uh, affected uh, down, down the road, generations, uh, because of what we're doing now, I think before we uh, make those kinds of uh, decisions, uh, we need to do a proper investigation. And I'm, I'm pleased that the, uh, uh, the uh, Public Utilities Commission is going forward with this, and we will be assisting them with all the information that we can give them so that they can come to a good decision to, for the health and welfare of all the people. Thank you very much. I want to mention that some, something that I did as a trustee, I and other trustees did a few years ago with respect to a cell phone tower. A pri private party asked to lease a location on uh, Kennebec Water District land, and it happened to be fairly near some houses. And we asked those people to come. One of them, a doctor's wife, said she was well aware that this, these cell phone towers put off EMF, same as what smart meters give off, at dangerous levels, and she wanted us to deny it. We checked into it a little bit ourselves, could not satisfy ourselves uh, as to the real evidence, uh, are they safe or not, decided to be on the safe side until we had better information than we had. That's exactly what the Public Utilities Commission should have done in this case and not authorized these type of smart meters to be put in place. It's also what the legislature should have done. The cell phone tower? The cell phone tower was not built there because we refused to lease the site to the party that wanted to put one there. The precautionary principle uh, is before you make a decision, it, it should be the responsibility of the person who wants to do something to provide the evidence that it's safe. Um, I have been to a number of smart meter meetings uh, in Augusta, the um, local towns in my area, Brunswick, Thompson, as well as Bath, when the smart meter information was first introduced by John Carroll of CMP. Also the Scarborough meeting that was held uh, first, uh, which drew many, 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 many people and ran for five hours and had to be rescheduled for a second evening. There is great question, more than question, there's great reason for concern about smart meters. I want to remind you, in 1990, when I got sick, nobody even said the word sick building syndrome. Now, we know now, right, very clearly, there's a great deal of evidence, and there are countries around the world, in Europe in particular, and then also there are many uh, states in our United States who are opposing these vehemently. And uh, California is, there are people in California who are moving to a product recall on smart meters. And I would ask everybody who happens to be listening to this today to think about that. And I had a smart meter installed on my home on September 8th, 2011, and it remained on my home until November 2011. My first bill in September, 1,025 kilowatts, which is usually about four to 600. My second bill, November, 1,223 kilowatts, okay? December's bill, 1,523 kilowatts. My first symptoms began with light bulbs variously through my house. Just blowing. One day, in a matter of three weeks, my computer fried. Turned it on one morning, black screen. Well pump, hot water tank, refrigerator that's freezing vegetables within, like, the refrigerator. I now have a pellet stove that has a fried motherboard, okay? I have been through $3,000 worth of damages. So, I mean, when I'm seeing all eight appliances, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, everything with a plug in my home, and CMP was always incurring and asking me, what have you done differently? I said, I allowed you to put that on my pole. Okay, that's the only thing that's different in my home. I got a smart meter. However, 
when I refused, I finally gave up in November. I said, I want that analog back. I don't care. I'll pay 12, 15, whatever it is. It's a lot cheaper than three grand in two months. Oh, my washer and dryer, I forgot that. My personal um, battle, if you will, has simply been that from the very beginning, we refused to uh, pay the $40 fee and the $12 monthly fee, uh, which no one seemed to really pay much attention to. I, I included notes in each of the bills stating that I was doing that and never heard back from anyone. And then I guess uh, maybe after the third month, um, there was a phone call which uh, I didn't take. My wife actually answered the phone and uh, explained that her husband was the one who was dealing with that and, uh, and would they call back, and they never did call back. Finally, we got a uh, disconnect notice because the, the amount that we weren't paying had reached some arbitrary amount. Apparently, it can be anywhere from $50 to over 100 or whatever. Uh, that's when they decided to send us a, a disconnect notice, uh, giving us 10 days to respond or pay or whatever. Um, and I, I uh, through other people who are helping with this, uh, learned that there's various ways to deal with that. And um, I, I have been fortunate enough not to be disconnected yet. A after a number of threats, I guess probably three times, maybe four, I have talked my way out of getting disconnected, but just, so to speak, by the skin of our teeth or whatever, um, yesterday being the most recent time. What, what I'm doing is an interesting little game, I guess, of, of waiting till I get the disconnect notice, calling, threatening to, uh, to file a complaint with the, the uh, CAD, um, and they always say, well, w w uh, don't do that until uh, we talk, but it's, it's the partial payment for my bill and I'll send you the rest next week or whatever, and do that as long as I can, <laughs> keeping it up, but I, I fear that I'll be, you know, it, it's going to catch up with me sooner or later, but that's, that's my technique, that's what we're doing at this point. I didn't know anything about smart meters until a couple of years ago. Someone told me about it, and I'd never heard about it. Um, but I'm one of those people that doesn't like to dismiss an alternative viewpoint, and so I like to do my own research. So I looked online and really investigated about smart meters, and I became very concerned. Uh, I even flew out to San Francisco to go to a conference about EMF, uh, international conference with experts from several different countries, and that was really life-changing for me when I walked out that door. Everything looked different. Uh, um, I don't use my cell phone much anymore, you know, concerned about Wi-Fi, smart meters. We still have our analog meter on our house, and we, we do pay the opt-out fee, uh, which is a hardship for us. We have to decide, you know, does the money go to groceries or the opt-out fee? Um, you know, but I, I'm just scared, you know, that they disconnect our power, and with the kids and everything, I don't want that to happen. And our, our meter reader came by the other day, and we had a nice chat, and I thought, well, you know, I feel good. He's... I'm keeping him employed. He's probably a family guy, you know, who knows. But, uh, you know, sometimes technology rushes to really replace people, and people need to be a part of this world, too. And uh, they need to be a part of the decisions that uh, legislators and companies make. Um, you know, it's not all about money. It's about people, too. Uh, just this last year, the WHO, the World uh, Health Organization, determined that it is a possible carcinogen uh, and uh, is concerned that um, continual, being continually subjected to RF uh, can cause uh, gliomas and brain cancer, um, as well as other cancers as well. So we are very, very concerned about this. The science is absolutely there. Uh, industry has hired their own people in order to kind of gl gloss over this. But we are asking everybody to do some research on, on your own about what the, what the situations are with the, with the health and safety issues around this. You can, you can call and have your meter uninstalled. You can ask at any time to, um, to have your meter switched over to an analog meter. They will try to convince you not to do that, but you can ask for that. You can also, and we are suggesting this to everybody, and I am one of those people, there are many people here today, who are not paying to opt out uh, because we believe it's, it's a, it's a breach, of, breach of ethics. I started the Smart Meter Safety Coalition um, a couple of years ago when this whole program was rolled out. So it's the Smart Meter Safety Coalition. Um, so it's eboxer at main.rr.com, e-b-o-x-e-r at main.rr.com. And phone number is 207-885-5556. There is not one study showing that smart meters are safe. And in fact, there are hundreds and hundreds of studies showing um, either inconclusive results or 
very significant biological harm at levels of radiation very similar to those emitted by smart meters. Um, so smart meters are definitely not safe. I hear from people every day um, through the Smart Meter Safety Coalition. I hear from people who have become very ill, migraines, um, insomnia, dizziness, heart palpitations, uh, people's cancer that has been in remission has come back. So I hear these stories and, and these people know that smart meters are harm, harmful and yet Central Maine Power is spending a lot of money and time and energy trying to convince the state that there's nothing wrong with this product um, when in fact it is very biologically harmful. Um, I was the original complainant with the PUC, so I filed the, the complaint almost two years ago that, <laughs> that started this whole process. And I mean, so I spent a year in technical conferences um, where CMP was fighting opt outs. I mean, CMP fought very, very hard for a year. They didn't want anyone to be able to opt out, so they hired experts uh, to try to prove in quotes, uh, that smart meters are so safe and that no one should be able to opt out. No one has any reason to opt out. So we spent uh, the better part of a year fighting their fight against opt outs. Uh, and so, yes, it was, it was absolutely precedent setting around the world um, to be able to say, okay, now these utility customers have at least have an option uh, to not have a dangerous product on their home. When I filed my initial complaint, um, Central Maine Power responded with a 250-page, basically, rebuttal on why smart meters are so safe, and they hired Exponent, which is a science and consulting firm that has represented the tobacco industry. They've represented the asbestos industry. Um, so this is a firm that industry hires to prove that dangerous products are safe. So we may be hearing from Exponent again. Um, I guess. Central Maine Power, <laughs> affectionately referred to as Central Spain Power, is owned by Iberdrola of Spain. And interestingly, Iberdrola is pioneering the hardwired version of smart meters in Europe. So hardwired smart meters are much safer. Um, they don't emit the radio frequency microwave radiation that the wireless smart meters emit. And so I find it very interesting that the company that owns Central Maine Power is pioneering the safer version. Uh, yes, I would encourage people to contact Ed Friedman. Uh, if there are people who want to intervene in the case, uh, they should contact the PUC and, and uh, see about intervening, and that would allow them to participate. If people want to uh, be witnesses, if they have a story to tell about their exposure to RF uh, radiation, uh, or other problems that they might have had with smart meters, I encourage them to contact Ed and, and put your stories in writing so that we can develop written testimony.